If you are a Nightline regular, you might recall a certain story I did about a famous doctor and his belief that medical technology could help end illness as we know it. After volunteering to sample his cutting edge tests, I was stunned when he told me that I had the kind of heart disease that could kill me soon. I walked away convinced that this random assignment saved my life. But 10 months later, I've heard from a number of doctors who aren't so sure. So tonight, a reevaluation and a trip into the confusing and expensive world that too many American patients know all too well. All right, Bill, have a seat. The moment of truth, yeah? Is that, that is me? Talk. That is part of you. The moment that shook me to the core happened on a sunny Beverly Hills morning in January. You know, the, un the unfortunate truth is you do have some heart disease now. First thought, I actually flashed to an image of my kid spreading ashes on the same mountain where I buried my dad. Second thought, I deserve this. You see, for my first four decades, I carried a secret, arrogant hunch that I was bulletproof. Sure, I exercise, but I can't remember my last checkup. I don't even have a doctor. And yeah, I like salad, but my food pyramid is built mostly with racks of ribs and a six pack. And now, after a ride in a full body CT scanner, I had Dr. David Agus circling spots on a screen and describing the price of all that willful ignorance. These lesions and significant arteries in the heart can cause heart attacks in the near term. So we all hear reading the paper about the 45 year old who went jogging and died of a heart attack. These are the things we worry about. Since he'd been described as a rock star of medicine, an oncologist to the likes of Lance Armstrong, Ted Kennedy and Steve Jobs, I took his words to heart, started seeing a specialist, taking a statin and eating better. But then I also started hearing from all the other well-respected doctors who believe that that life-saving moment was just bad medicine. You know, when I saw that piece and, and saw that interaction, I have to say it broke my heart. The idea that someone would say to you, based on that, that you could drop dead from a heart attack, there's just nothing to, to support that. In the new paperback edition of his mega bestseller, The End of Illness, Dr. Agus uses my case to defend his ideas, but also devotes many pages to answering his many critics. I'm a little bit shocked by the pushback I've gotten, both positive and negative on the book, but it truly is an honor that people are talking. My education came uh, in the controversy over the CT body scan. Yes. Looking back, do you believe that test saved my life? I believe that test put an intervention into your place where you've changed your behavior and what you're doing so that there's a good potential that it did save your life. You know, the experts in cardiology I talk to say that there's just not the data to support that. My ABC News colleague, Dr. Richard Besser, is the former acting head of the Centers for Disease Control. And he's in the camp that believes that expensive tests like the one that found plaque in my heart can often do more harm than good. Aside from the radiation risk, the results are often confusing or misleading, which could lead to more expensive and risky tests, which is why the American Heart Association and the FDA would never recommend this test for someone without symptoms, someone like me. It changed your behavior and put you in preventive mode, and there's a major power to that. It did, and, I, and I'm wrestling with whether my cholesterol score on a piece of paper or a, a good, wise chat with a doctor I trust would have had the same impact. But the more research I've done, I mean, according to um, New England General Medicine came out, talking about calcium scores, high risk is 300, low risk is anything below 100. Mm -hmm. Mine was less than 50. Right, but anybody with greater than 10 has a eightfold chance compared to the average of a cardiovascular disease. But there are people who have a zero score who die of cardiovascular disease. No question about it. Because and there are people who live to be 100 and have plenty of plaque buildup. It's, it's not as cut and dry as no question that's about what it. you have, you're going to die if you don't change. It's relative risk. It's all shades of gray. A cynic would say you were using me to sell your book. I don't believe that. Right. I, I think you believe what you believe, but well, but the How data, do I get such different diagnosis but, but, from different doctors? Because you didn't fit the standard risk criteria. That being said, I think the risk criteria must be wrong, right? Because you had heart disease. Most 40-year-olds don't have it. You did. And so you can argue the technology and the means to do it, but we picked up something that could save your life. This whole episode demonstrates the constant tug of war within medicine. One side determined to drive patients to the latest technologies, 
Another taking a more cautious approach until decades of data makes sense of it all. I got to say, what worries me more than anything is not my emotional roller coaster, is that our story did more harm than good for the general public. And I have a lot of doctors who tell me that's the case. Uh, you know, the good is, is that, I agree with you, it, it created discord. But I've gotten thousands of emails from doctors who supported it also, and including some of the leadership of the American Heart Association. And no one argues with the core wisdom of Agus's book, that is, eat fresh food, get plenty of sleep, move throughout the day, and learn as much as you can about your family health history. All of them common sense steps that do not require a $1,300 radioactive donut ride. So many of the things in his, his book are on target, but it is incredibly confusing because you're gonna hear different opinions from different doctors. And basically what people want is, is the truth. And the truth is kind of a moving target. By the way, Dr. Haggis tells me all profits from the end of illness will be donated to medical research.